Greetings humans and welcome to my companion video for my article on middleofnowheregaming.com titled Digitally Doomed Resident Evil 1.5 Now obviously the title here says Resident Evil 2 that is because this is in fact the cancelled version of Resident Evil 2 that uh, was scrapped late 1996 and uh, is a very different game from what we ended up getting. Now Resident Evil 2, if you're aware, starred Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield as main characters. Resident Evil 1.5, as this is now titled by fans, still starred Leon, but instead of Claire, had a character named Elza Walker. So for the purposes of this gameplay video, I'm going to play as her, just because she's the unknown factor here. From everything I've read, she was originally based on Alicia Silverstone, which is kind of interesting. I, I think this would have been around the time uh, Clueless came out, so it makes sense. She was very popular, but it still would have been a little weird. But the original concept art was definitely based on her. Now I've I've never played this before except for this room, because this isn't a completed game, and there's certain tricks here like you, like uh, you can give yourself any weapon or item that's available. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with the weapons, just so I have something to actually fight back with besides the chintzy little knife here. So, let's see, how do I do this? <clears throat> okay, there we go. Now, I apologize, if you hear me cough or anything, I'm still getting over uh, what I like to refer to as the Christmas plague, so please bear with me. You might be able to hear it in my voice still. Let's see... I definitely want a shotgun. That'll be nice. Grenades, I think, crashed the game. Yeah, as you'll probably see here, this version of Resident Evil 2 uh, was going to have a lot of weapons that the final version didn't end up having. Okay, some ammo. Also, if you pick up a little bit of wobble, on the camera, I'm sorry about that too, I don't have a capture card. This is all off screen. It's kind of a low budget setup here. Let's see... Oh, dang it. I missed the shotgun shells, I'm gonna have to cycle back through. It's interesting to see what kind of items uh, were going to be available. I don't even know what any of these do. Some of them are from Resident Evil 2, of course, but the new ones... Ah, it always gets stuck on the keycard. That metal pipe you saw was actually going to be a melee weapon. Oh, I definitely want the Super Red Hawk. But yeah, there were going to be additional melee weapons besides the knife in Resident Evil 1.5. So it's interesting that they didn't really make the cut. There we go. Alright, now we're ready. Uh, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and equip the shotgun. I love me a shoddy, after all. Yeah, there we go. Alright, now, obviously, Elza's story was gonna start in the lobby of the RPD precinct. The opening cutscene presumably would have had her riding in to Raccoon City, much like Claire. Except, what you'll see here is Elza's motorcycle. 
it, I would assume she drove straight through the front of the building and then the shutters closed behind her. Because like Claire would be later on, Elsa was a motorcycle enthusiast. Yeah, she obviously had an attachment to the motorcycle. Now, this game is still a work in progress. It's being done by a talented team of fans. Because this... There, although there exists a version of Resident Evil 1.5 that uh, was 80% completed at Capcom, uh, the only version that leaked back in 2013 uh, sat at a 30% completion rate. And fans have been trying to finish it ever since. And you really have to admire the effort that this takes. <coughs> now, a lot of doors, from what I hear, uh, are not properly connected, or won't go anywhere at all, or they'll loop you back, like some kind of Twilight Zone uh, scenario. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Oh, there's our first zombie. I'll name him Billy. Come on, Billy. Whoa, Billy was a little swift. All right. Okay. Oh, um. Yeah, that probably would have been the very first zombie Elsa encountered, and it probably would have been a scripted event where she finds him on the floor, he gets up and chases her, and she's forced to kill him. I, I would assume with the knife. So, oh, what was that? Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, I heard about this. Yeah, originally there was going to be some kind of uh, item placement uh, deal uh, in place with Pepsi. So it'll be... it'll probably be interesting to see how many of these we find in the game. There's no sort of information that pops up when you click on it. The doors are a little finicky to act. Oh. Okay, we're already outside. And the box is floating. That's interesting. Um. Climbing the pipes activated a door uh, animation. That's interesting. But yeah, so if you've played Resident Evil 2, you probably recognize this guy as. Um, oh, was it Robert Kendo? Uh, the gun shop owner. In this version, uh, he was actually going to be just a guy named John, I believe. And was gonna be able to survive to the end of the game I think if uh, you know if all went well and I think his primary reason for being here was to show you around the RPD and to get you around the parts that are a little bit destroyed and he just killed himself poor John I wish you would have talked to somebody first can I follow Come on, I want to act like a cow. I'd like to follow you off the cliff, please. Okay, he's gone. Well, let's uh, see if we can go back.
We've stepped into the Twilight Zone, people. I repeat, we have stepped into the Twilight Zone. That did not take long at all. What has it been, five minutes? <coughs> That's okay. That's what the debug menu is for. If I knew how to use the debug menu. Okay, there we go. You can go back to the lobby, if it is called the lobby. There we go. Yeah, this looks familiar. Elsa has some anger issues. I assume. I, that's the thing, nobody really knows anything about Elsa's character. As far as I know, none of the scripted scenes or cutscenes uh, were anywhere to be seen in the, the data. Oh, Billy's back. Billy Badass, more like. Okay. So, yeah. I'll, uh. Be very interested to, oh, okay, that's playing again. Be very interested to see how the team reassembling this handles the story. Because even though the completion rate for the leaked document was only 30%, supposedly it contained enough data that uh, they could connect the dots to about 92% of uh, what the final game would have been. So you have to assume stories in there somewhere. But it'll be very interesting to see how they handle all that. Okay, something clearly went wrong. The camera is not transitioning. Excuse me. Hey, you okay? I saw you twitch. Are you playing dead? Oh, you twitched again. I know you're not dead. Now you are. Oh, maybe Elza was going to be some kind of sociopath. That would be interesting. There's obviously something wrong with her head. She doesn't know how to hold a shotgun properly. She doesn't like fans. That's character development, right? Funny how she deduced that by checking one locker. Yep, they're all locked. Uh, I guess we can see if the elevator works. I doubt it. Nothing else works. I'm trapped! Or I can just teleport. Okay, outside again at least. Ah, a box. What can we do with Mr. Box? Oh, sorry. It could be a missus. Just lets people walk all over her, though. Ah, hell. You guys again? 
go home. We're closed. We're closed. Losers. Huh. Now that's interesting. Obviously that's a picture of Claire. I wonder if that's something that the uh, fans working on this just added in there. Yeah, it had to be because the the leaked uh, files would have been in Jap in Japanese, and that obviously says missing in English. So yeah, it's probably just an Easter egg fans put in there. Ah, uh, that's right. I forgot the classic Resident Evils. You always had to press a button to go down the stairs. Oh, that's funny. Hmm. <coughs> um, I don't want to risk a door just yet. We're going to see how far down this goes. Man, that is really trippy. Oh, crap. Ah, typewriter. You know, I never thought about it, but it must have been tricky to like just design because all the backgrounds were pre-rendered and pretty much just digital paintings must have been tricky to make it so the characters couldn't break the illusion as you can see her feet are clearly stepping all over that table okay that door doesn't open boy she walks upstairs like Robocop that's crazy Ah, and she levitates like Chris Angel. Very talented woman, this Elsa Walker. Except she can't get past this little... Okay. We're going to try this again. Boy, look at that ponytail just whipping around. There's a Willa Smith joke in there somewhere. Ah, oh, back here. Poor Joe. He will be missed. Or John. Or Robert. Whatever the hell his name was. I don't remember. You know what? Read the article if you want to know his name. It's recorded there. <coughs> Whoa. Easy there. Go back to sleep. It's just a dream. Hey, no teleporting. I said no teleporting. I've heard some weapons actually crash the game, so I guess I'm not going to risk this. I'll stick with what works. Oh, get off me. I'm trying to aim at your head, which don't work. Oh, okay, it kind of works if you get it on the way down. Let's try that again. Nah, I guess not. Wait, those are some interesting zombie sounds. Whoa, 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 easy there. Hey, big guy, get off me. Dick. 
I'm in caution status now. That's no good. That's no good for anybody. Okay, what do we have here? Absolutely nothing. I like the looks of this. Insert here riddle about the Borgias and their love for poison. There's a button under the picture frame, will you push it? I, I didn't get to push it. So obviously somebody still has to come up with the poem, or sorry, the riddle for that puzzle. I done lost Elza. We're just gonna try this one again. There we go. Painting description number five. Painting description number six. Okay, none of these doors seem to work. By the way, I have no idea what version or what patch number uh, of this download I'm playing. This was surprisingly hard to find online. Um, I can't even really tell you where I got it. I don't remember. It was a complicated process, it took me about two days to find. Same team has also put out a battle mode using Resident Evil 1.5 assets. Only the camera is set up uh, more along the lines of Resident Evil 4. It's just a fun little mini game where you go around killing things. I think it's called the Battle Coliseum, actually. Okay, we're going to go to Chief Brian Iron's office. Oh. Are you all right? You're awfully tiny and phasey. Hey, look at me. Hey. Hey. You. I'm talking to you. Okay, well, you can kind of see it, but, um, yeah, so, in what Resident Evil 1.5, um, Brian Irons was not going to be the villain he turned out to be in the final version of Resident Evil 2. In Resident Evil 2, he ended up going a little bit batty, and, uh, kind of like the governor in Walking Dead, uh, was not, oh, uh, hell. Okay. Um, but anyway, he ended up hunting down women and chasing them through the RPD and killing them for sport. This Brian Irons would have been an ally the whole time, as far as I know, and also could have potentially survived the game, I think. There isn't a whole lot of information to find about this scrapped version of the game. I heard this was supposed to do something. Yeah, I was pretty sure this little uh, model of the city was supposed to open up somehow. 
Whoa! Okay. That... That's kind of creepy, I'm not gonna lie. What is wrong with his head? Okay, I'm getting out of here. Actually, I'll try to load it one more time, see if that changes anything. Nope. He's still playing Nightcrawler, so yeah, we're gonna... Whoa! Um... Okay, so he knows there's something wrong with him. Well, that's nice. I'm getting the hell up out of here. Oh, sweet. We're... Okay, um... Actually, that is not where I came from. What ifs? So, this is obviously the basement prison. Prison base... I don't know, whatever you want to say. You've probably noticed, but this version of the RPD actually looked like a police department. From what I've been able to find out online, that the reason for that is... The developers were originally trying to make it look like a legit uh, American, specifically New York City, police precinct. But they could not get enough uh, good reference photos. And they couldn't keep flying back and forth between Japan and America. So they just kind of ended up for the final version of Resident Evil 2, making the RPD look like any generic kind of, kind of museum and just added a file to the game that said, oh yeah, this uh, building was recently renovated by the police. So that's a nice little nugget of info and or rumor. This is one of the rooms that was attached to the hall I was just in. And this looks a little funky. You would assume this is where Ben Bertolucci would be hanging out, but apparently he was never in Resident Evil 1.5. In fact, I think he's the only character from Resident Evil 2 that would not have made an appearance in 1.5. Have I been here before? I'm just checking doors at random with no real, no real method for, oh, the firing range. So this area, if I remember right, was featured in one of the only, like, public previews and or trailers shown at, I think, like, TGS 1996 or something along those lines. Oh, what the? Okay, okay. Don't panic. Ow. Oh, crap. Doggies do not belong in air ducts. I'm sorry. Oh. This gives me perfect opportunity here. Since I've been attacked a little bit, you can notice some battle damage. And that is a feature Resident Evil 1.5 was actually going to have. There would be dynamic battle damage throughout the entire game. Uh, that obviously did not end up making it in Resident Evil 2. It's a pretty advanced feature for what would have been a 1997 game. What's my status now? I'm still in caution, okay. That's good, at least I'm not overly close to death.
sorry again for the coughing, people. There's no real way of getting around this. I mean, I could have waited till I was well before trying to record a video and do audio, but eh. It's funny how these doors still make me nervous. The copy of the original Resident Evil that I have that uh, also... Oh, that's wonderful. But, uh, yeah, the copy of the original Resident Evil I have originally belonged to my older brother, and it had this... Oh, hello. This little issue where it would... Let's say... Four times out of ten would freeze on the loading doors, or the door loading screens, I mean. So there's also always a little bit of added intensity when any of us would play that disc, and to this day I still have it whenever I play an old school style PS1 Resident Evil. Anytime I see those doors, there's just a little bit of anxiety in the back of my mind. Okay, so that's the security grate that uh, blocks the camera. Now this version of the RPD supposedly would have had a pretty uh, complicated system of security grates that would have to be activated and deactivated throughout the entire game. The final version of Resident Evil 2, if you're f familiar with it at all, you'll know there was uh, a couple of hallways that used that feature still, but it was in no way as implemented as it would have been. In so, okay, yeah. We may already be out of areas, people. Gonna do a quick look see. Uh, go to the heliport. We haven't been there yet, I don't think. Oh, crap. Hey, Robert! John! Joe. Robert John. Hey, he, he's Ant Man. He's not Ant Man. Whoa. Okay, you don't have to screech at me. Jeez. What the hell is going on here? Yeah, so this is where we would drop down and then he would run and try to lead me off of that ledge. The ledge I still can't jump down. Well, that was something new at least. Who turned off the lights since last time I was in here? It wasn't a start before, was it? Couldn't have been. This... It looks a little different, but I think this is where, in Resident Evil 2, you find Claire's... Well, any character could take them, but you would find an item pack, which would expand your inventory, or a submachine gun. I always gave Claire the item pack and gave Leon the submachine gun. Yeah, I think I think this is the room. It, it reminds me of that room at any rate. That is not what items are supposed to do, Elza. Okay, you're very impressive, Elza. Stop levitating now. And tell your polka dot shadow to stop levitating too. Now you're Kitty Pride. Awesome. Mm-hmm. 
Huh. So this is a thing. Oh, so is that. Oh, I think I know this. I think we're fitting to fight some giant zombie baboons, people. Enemies that did not make it into the final version of Resident Evil 2, but would eventually kind of make it in with uh, the monkey enemies in Resident Evil 0. Actually, I'm not seeing any. Battle music's going. RPD vans. Hmm. Well, that's disappointing. Oh, the kennel. Because I fought the dog so well the first time around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. We, this team was definitely putting some Easter eggs in here. So there's Claire, obviously Chris Redfield's sister from Resident Evil 1, who would eventually star in Resident Evil 2 herself. And Pierce, who I assume is named after Pierce Nivens, who would be Chris Redfield's partner in Resident Evil 6. I vaguely remember Jojo having something to do with Resident Evil also, but I can't remember at the moment. Like a developer or something, I don't know. Oh! Foo on you! You dead? No auto aim, you must be dead. Ha uh ha. -huh. funny, these rooms are so empty that when a zombie or anything does show up, it's kind of a jump scare, as janky as this whole thing is. Ah, hell. Now she's invisible. This woman has every superpower. Kind of like Awful Alice from the movies, who I really, really, really despise, by the way. Oh, hello. What, you want a timeout? Okay, timeout. Actually, I need to reload my shotgun anyway. <clears throat> what? I already gave you a rest. Whatever. Wait, can I talk to you? I've never tried talking to you. You have nothing to say. What the... Uh... I didn't click on anything. This is this is the camera transition. Try that again. Mm-hmm. This 
visiting the morgue is always a good idea. Oh, what's over here? Ha! <laughs> ah! You're not dying. Way back down. Nighty night. Nothing does nothing. Have I gone in here before? Ah, okay. So this would have been a version of the liquor uh, interrogation room, which, okay. She shrank. She's also the wasp. Go figure. Table dancing. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Okay, well, I think that's it, everybody. So, final thoughts on Elza's version of uh, this little thing here. Um, there's not much to see. I think Leon's story probably would have been where the baboons were. Um, but yeah, it, I would very much like to see this this completed. Turn the volume down a little bit. Now, so yeah, I would very much like to know what Elsa's story would have been. Whether or not she would have survived the game. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it would be nice if Capcom would put some resources into finishing this and maybe releasing it as a bonus on uh, the Resident Evil 2 full remake that they're doing. But, hey, Billy. Even beyond that, uh... I would love, uh, like, in addition to, like, a remade version of Hunk's story and uh, Tofu's little unlockable mode in Resident Evil 2, I would love to see uh, a short little side story using Elza. Maybe she could be, like, a friend of Claire's that followed her to Raccoon City. Maybe they were in the same motorcycle club. I followed her to Raccoon City to try to help find, find Chris. And runs into some trouble. Maybe she never makes it to the RPD. Maybe she just runs around in the outside areas of Raccoon City. Maybe she dies. Maybe not. But that's certainly the kind of thing I would like to see. But, regardless, you know, some very talented fans obviously have this this uh, little project going. And they're, they seem to be doing pretty well. I mean, it's rough around the edges. But... I mean, this is a passion project for these people, and I don't have the talent to do anything like this. I'm glad some people do, and that they're willing to put this effort into it. Because I figure this will be uh, at least near completion eventually, and we'll be able to, you know, the doors will be properly connected, there will be enemies populating more rooms, every weapon will work, the items will be there, maybe puzzles will be completed, so, you know, that's something I'd love to play through. Until then, this has been Chris Cobb for MiddleOfNowhereGaming.com. Thanks for watching.